Topic 9 Superposition. Under this topic, we have got four main subheadings stationary waves or standing waves. We have uh, had a mild introduction to this in the last chapter. And then there is diffraction, there is interference, mainly two source interference. And we'll also be talking about diffraction gratings. Under stationary waves, we will explain and use the principle of superposition in simple applications. We'll also talk about experiments that demonstrate stationary waves using microwaves, stretch strings and air columns. We'll also deal with nodes and antinodes in the formation of stationary waves. Under diffraction, we will understand the term diffraction. We will show an understanding of experiments that demonstrate diffraction, including the diffraction of water waves in a ripple tank with both a wide gap and a narrow gap. Under interference, we will talk about um, the difference, or rather we will talk about interference itself, and we will talk about coherent sources of waves. And then we will show an understanding of experiments that demonstrate two source interference using water ripples, light and microwaves. We will understand the conditions required if two source interference fringes are to be observed. That's what you see here. And then we'll use this formula lambda equals to ax over d when we will use this formula when we deal with double slit um, interference using light. And then diffraction gratings, we will recall and solve problems using this formula, d sine theta equals to n lambda. And then we will describe the use of a diffraction grating to determine the wavelength of light. The principle of superposition. Let's talk about the idea first. Yeah? When two waves meet at a point in time, they will combine, okay? And that's called superposition. So let's talk about two main ideas, constructive interference and destructive interference. So let's talk about the first case. We have two waves, they arrive in phase. Let's talk about two waves meeting at a point and they arrive in phase. What does this mean? This means that the crest will meet the crest and the troughs will meet the troughs. In other words, a peak will meet a peak. Yeah? Now when that happens, we have constructive interference. So the waves will reinforce each other. Now the important words here, when crests meet crests and troughs meet troughs, we are saying that the waves arrive in phase. The other important word is constructive. We are talking about constructive interference. And the other important word is reinforce. The waves will reinforce each other. Now, if two waves of the same frequency, say F, and amplitude, say capital A, or you can just use small a. So if two waves, same frequency, and amplitude, small a or big A, meet in phase, the resultant wave, the frequency remains the same, the resultant wave will have an amplitude of 2a, okay? So the main thing is two waves of the same frequency and amplitude, say capital A, they meet in phase. The resultant wave will have an amplitude capital 2a. I have drawn it here for you. We have one peak meeting another peak. This one has an amplitude of small a. This one has an amplitude of small a. Again, we have two mix excuse me, we have two peaks meeting at a point, each one has an amplitude of A, okay, amplitude A here and amplitude A here. When this peak meets this peak, you will have a resultant wave with an amplitude, A plus A is 2A. So this picture here is also good. We have uh, reinforcement. This is one peak meeting another peak will give you this peak. And then we have this trough meeting this trough will give you this trough. Next, 
if two waves arrive out of phase out of phase means what a phase difference of pi radians we have covered that before so if two waves arrive out of phase that is a crest meets a trough we have destructive interference okay a crest meets a trough we have destructive interference so the waves what happens is the waves cancel each other out so if two waves have equal amplitude the resultant wave will have zero amplitude again we are talking about a peak meeting a trough and if they have equal amplitude the resultant wave will have zero amplitude i have uh, shown you a simple example here we have a peak of amplitude a meeting a trough of amplitude a at a point in time and what happens is we're going to have a resultant wave with zero amplitude that's what is indicated here by a horizontal line so the resultant displacement will be what here this is positive a plus this a is measured downwards is negative a a plus minus a is zero so we have zero amplitude and we call this destructive interference and make sure you know this word cancellation okay so this picture here is also pretty useful we have a peak meeting a trough and we have cancellation we have a trough meeting a peak and we have cancellation okay so when two waves i made a note here when two waves interfere destructively the resultant wave will have a smaller amplitude what does this mean let's say you have a peak amplitude 3a meeting a trough amplitude a again we have a peak amplitude 3a meeting a trough amplitude a so to find the resultant displacement you will write it as 3a plus minus a and you'll get 2a that's what you see here so you have a resultant wave with a smaller amplitude next we want to state the principle of superposition extremely important for you it applies to all types of wave the principle of superposition states that when two or more waves meet at a point the resultant displacement at that point is equal to the sum of the displacements of the individual waves at that point now let's talk about an interference pattern we are going to talk about constructive interference when that happens destructive interference when that happens and we are going to be looking at um, two points a and b which are point sources of waves okay a and b are two point sources of waves and we are going to look at the waves traveling from a to points like d c and e again we are going to be looking at waves traveling from a and b okay from a and b waves are going to be traveling out to points like d c and e and we are going to compare the difference in their path lengths so let's start uh, again a and b are two point sources of waves now c right c is equidistant from equidistant from a and b so i've drawn it here okay this is a this is b these are point sources of waves and c here is equidistant from a and b now a wave from a and a wave from b would have traveled the same distance in reaching c you can see that yeah it travels the same distance in reaching c again a wave from a and a wave from b would have traveled the same distance in reaching c therefore the path difference between the two waves will be good zero when your path difference is zero you find that constructive interference will take place now let's look at d and e at d let's look at my picture here right? this is the point d i have a wave coming out from a and a wave coming out from b again i have a wave coming out from a and i have a wave coming out from b and the difference in the path length is 1 lambda okay 
the difference in the path length from here to here is one lambda. That's what I've written here. Okay, one wave travels one lambda more than the other. Okay, so the path difference is lambda, and when the path difference is lambda, you will have constructive interference. Now let's look at E. Now when you look at E, I've drawn the picture here again. We have a wave coming out from A reaching E. We have a wave coming out from B reaching E. And now you see that the path difference here is lambda over 2. Okay, this distance. Okay, the path difference is lambda over 2. That means one wave from A and one wave from B. We are looking at the difference in path lengths of wave travel. And we find the difference is lambda over 2. That's what you see here. When your path difference is lambda over 2, you'll get destructive interference. So, constructive interference, very quickly, crest meets crest. This is D, yeah? Constructive interference, crest meets crest, and trough meets trough, okay? Same thing for point C, we have constructive interference, so crest meets crest, and trough meets trough. Whereas for E here, destructive interference, crest meets trough. Let's read on. What I just said, I've written here, at D and E, the waves from A and B will have traveled different distances. Very important paragraph here. If the path difference is lambda, 2 lambda, 3 lambda, etc., that means whole number of wavelengths, the waves arrive in phase. What is in phase? Crest meets crest, trough meets trough. Now, when they arrive in phase, constructive interference takes place, okay, producing maximum disturbance. Now, if the path difference is lambda over 2, 3 over 2 lambda, 5 over 2 lambda, and so on, odd number of half wavelengths, the waves arrive out of phase. Therefore, we have destructive interference, crest meets trough, okay, producing what? Minimum disturbance. Let's read this line. This collection of maxima and minima produced by the superposition of overlapping waves is called an interference pattern. Now we want to talk about interference using sound waves. Okay, This is the setup. We have an audio signal generator and then we have two speakers which are placed one to two meter apart. And then I've plugged in a line here this broken line here is mine. I'm calling it line L1, L2. And we're going to walk along this line. And the picture uh, also shows wave fronts. Yeah? The picture also shows wave fronts. Good. Let's read through the notes. Each loudspeaker produces a note of the same frequency that we can adjust using the signal generator. So each loudspeaker produces a note of the same frequency. This experiment is done in open air, say in a playing field on a windless day. So we do this in open air, uh, like I said here, uh, in a playing field to avoid reflection from the walls. What do you do to observe interference? You walk along L1, L2. What do you hear? You can hear loud sounds and quieter sounds alternately. Again, you can hear loud sounds and quieter sounds alternately. So L is for loud, Q is for quiet. Yeah. I repeat, L is for loud sound, Q is for quieter sound. Good. Loud sounds tell you that that's where constructive interference takes place. And quieter sounds, that's where destructive interference takes place. Again, loud sounds where constructive interference takes place and quieter sounds where destructive interference takes place. Now, to produce an observable interference pattern, very important, yeah? To produce an observable interference pattern, the two wave sources must be coherent. So, what are coherent sources? Coherent sources have the same frequency and they have a constant phase difference. Okay, I'll repeat. 
This is very important. To produce an observable interference pattern, the two wave sources must be coherent. And you have to know what are coherent sources. Coherent wave sources, they vibrate at the same frequency and they have the and they have constant phase difference. 